You might have already heard the news. Last year, archaeologists announced that the world's oldest wooden structure had been found at Kalambo Falls in Zambia. A team of researchers working in the far north of Zambia, at the site of Kalambo Falls, made an unexpected archaeological discovery. What may well be the oldest man-made wooden structure... Archaeologists discovered the Colombo Falls sites in 1953. Soon after this discovery, excavations began at numerous different places along the Colombo River. At Site B, excavators struck gold. They were down 16 feet beneath the surface, and they struck a layer that was chock full of stone tools. All of these different tools were embedded inside of this sedimentary layer. And these tools had the distinctive features of the Acheulean industry, and that indicated that they might have been made by either Homo erectus or Homo heidelbergensis. The excavators also found something more unusual. They found these tree trunks preserved in the soil. But these tree trunks hadn't been mineralized or petrified. They weren't petrified wood. Rather, the high water table right next to the river there had actually preserved these tree trunks. And so this original wood had actually been preserved for thousands of years in place. Fast forward to 2019, when excavations into the waterlogged deposits alongside the Colombo River began to uncover wooden artifacts. The most significant of these finds, and the one that's getting all the media attention, is Object 1033. Object 1033 is a log from a large fruited bush willow tree. It's a tree that still grows in Zambia today. And this log is about four and a half feet long. But what's interesting is that this log was found lying on top of another log. And where these two crisscrossed or intersected, there were notches in each. On the upper log, there were evidence of chop marks and scrape marks right where the notch was and similar scrape marks could be seen on the larger tree trunk underneath as well. So this is great evidence that these pieces of wood were actually intentionally shaped by stone tools, chopping to deepen these notches and scraping to make them even deeper, to make them fit together into this interlocking corner for some sort of structure. Four other artifacts were also found at the site. These included a large block of wood, a kind of wedge-shaped piece of wood, a stick, and what's called a digging stick, and it's believed that this stick was kind of used to kind of root through the dirt. And all of these different wooden artifacts displayed these marks on them, indicating either chopping or scraping of the wood by some sort of stone tool. After being retrieved from these sediments, the artifacts were flown to Liverpool University in England, Great care was taken not to let these pieces of wood dry out because it might cause cracking and damage. When they arrived, the artifacts were submerged in tanks of chlorinated water, and special photography equipment was used to photograph the wood underwater and create three-dimensional models that researchers could study. The university does eventually have plans to return the wood samples to Zambia for storage in the Livingstone Museum. Now here's the kicker. This wood was too old to be carbon dated. The team actually had to use another dating method called luminescence dating to actually test the sediment in which these pieces of wood were found. And they got an age of 476,000 years for the layer in which that object 1033 was actually found. So let me put that into perspective. The oldest fossils of Homo sapiens, the species to which you and I belong, date back to 360,000 years old. This dated to 476,000 years old. So according to conventional dating, these pieces of wood were more than 100,000 years older than the oldest fossils of our species. So how can we understand this discovery from a creationist perspective? Well, first we need to look at the dating of the site. How old are these artifacts actually? Well, these artifacts are buried under all these alternating layers of sand, silt, gravel, clay, and pebbles. 
And all of these layers seem to have been laid down by the Colombo River. As it's moved and meandered over time, the river built up sediment and entombed these pieces of wood deep underground. The regional nature of this depositional environment seems to indicate that this is post-flood. In other words, this structure was not buried in the flood, this happened after the flood. Now, the fact that there were people at this site seems to indicate that this is also post-Babel. People had already dispersed from Babel in the Middle East and had gotten way down to Zambia and were able to begin working on building this sort of structure. However, this site is much older than like the earliest evidence of cities, for example, and so this predates the time of Abraham. So these artifacts come from somewhere between the time of Babel and the time of Abraham. Now what about that luminescence dating? What can we glean from that? Well, as I mentioned earlier, that luminescence dating gave a date earlier than the oldest known Homo sapiens fossil. So while as creationists we don't accept those exact dates, we can pretty reasonably assume that these artifacts are relatively older than the earliest Homo sapiens fossils, even if they're not 100,000 years older, they're still older. But who made the artifacts? Well, we can't say for certain, and that's because there were multiple different people groups in Africa during this time. These included Homo erectus, Homo heidelbergensis, and possibly Homo naledi. What this find demonstrates is that whoever made this structure was pretty intelligent. Unfortunately, many modern paleoanthropologists have this kind of derogatory view of these early human species. They think that they were somehow unintelligent, unable to innovate, um, not creative, all of these sorts of strange opinions that I, I think are very unwarranted. And I think this is a great counterexample where you see one of these early human species was participating in this complex behavior of using stone tools to shape wood and taking individual pieces, putting them together to form a composite structure. There's a lot of forethought, planning, uh, skill, talent that's all going into creating something like this. So for now, the crisscrossed logs of Colombo Falls are the world's oldest known wooden structure. If you enjoyed this video, please make sure to like and subscribe. Also, share it with your friends who might be interested. Thanks for watching.